Oh, big gust of wind. Big gust of wind. So hello everybody, welcome back to another On Location video. Today, I'm at the, quite frankly, amazing Hoover building. Now, first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to at Laura Fitz London, who reached out to me on Instagram, sent me a message and said, hey, you should check out this building here and look at it. It is, it is absolutely amazing. So as far as I know, it was built in like 1933 and it's called the Hoover building because it makes Hoovers, like vacuum cleaners. And then apparently in the Second World War, it developed or manufactured like aircraft, World War II aircraft parts. Um, but now it's a Tesco and it's got this awesome sign here. So this is actually the second time I've been here. I tried to record a video earlier on in the week and 50% of the sound didn't actually record, but I'm not mad because it's such a cool location. I'm more than happy to come back. So I've got two photographs in mind. One is going to be like a side on profile, trying to incorporate this sign in with this building. And it's going to be essentially this sort of angle. And then the next photograph I'm going to take is going to be like a front on. The only trouble with this is it's such a big, long building. I'm just not sure a front on is actually going to fit. Uh, but we'll try and figure that out anyway. But yeah, so anyway, let's get set up and see what we can do. I'm going to put you over here. So today I'm going to be shooting on the EOSR with the 16 to 35. The building's so big that I need to go as wide as I possibly can to get it all in. Uh, that does mean there is a danger of the edges warping, but it's, we should be able to fix that in post anyway. But yeah, so that's the setup. Let's get it on the tripod and uh, take the shot. So as always, I'm going to be using this circular polarizer because even though there's not a lot of glare from the sun, there's, it's quite a hazy day today. There's not, there's not many clouds. It's more of like a, an atmospheric haze going on. But I'm going to use a polarizer because there's a lot of glass on the front of this building. And I want to try and, one, I want to try and keep as much blue in the sky as possible, as always, um, and take that glare out of, the, out of that atmospheric haze. And also, I just want to try and minimize that glare in the glass. So yeah, polarizer is always going to do that job very nicely. Because I always have to forget something, I forgot on my shutter, because this isn't the sturdiest of tripods, especially when I've got this extended fully, it does have a little bit of a wobble to it. So a trigger would have been absolutely perfect, but of course I've forgotten it, haven't I? So what I'm gonna have to do is set it to a timer. So I think like a 10 second timer should be fine, just to keep as steady as possible. But there's only one thing more sturdy than a tripod, and that's a tripod with a timer, as they say. So I'm shooting F11 because I want to get as much of this building in focus as possible. And I've also got a small little foreground element as well. So hopefully F11 does, but we can just play around with that. Uh, shutter speed doesn't really matter because I'm on a tripod, but I'm shooting at 125th of a second and ISO 100 because it's a pretty bright day today. So let's, uh, let's make sure this is all lined up and straight. Let's take this shot. Right, second composition is going to be a front on. And then I'll probably go handheld with the 70 to 200 and uh, get some sort of snapshots as well. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get a set up for this front on. So yeah, as I predicted, the uh, building's just far too wide to get everything in. So what I've done is I've come back outside of the actual gates and I should be able to incorporate these two sort of like lamps that are uh, on pillars just at the entrance. They're really cool and they sort of match the sort of art deco style of the entire building. And then straight, straight on you've got this, again, really nice art deco patterns on the front door with uh, the Hoover building sign above it. Um, I think that makes for a great photo. So yeah, front on, we're not going to get the whole thing in, but we should still come away with a decent shot. Right, 
quiet. So that's the two compositions done on the tripod. Let's get set up on the grass and have a sit down for a second and think about what we're going to do next. So that's the two shots I had in mind with the tripod. I, wanted, uh, I knew I wanted to get a nice angled shot with the Tesco sign incorporated into it, and I knew I wanted to get a front-on shot. Um, I didn't get the entire building in it, but that doesn't matter. I think it's still a cool shot anyway. I think the two little um, sort of lamp posts on the entrance gate are just lovely, and they, they really match the front of the building quite nicely. So yeah, I'm pleased with those two shots. Now I'm going to run around with this because I want to get some detail shots. I want to get a close-up of the sign of the actual Hoover building sign. And I want to get some close-ups of the Art Deco decorations on the front of the building as well. Um, but yeah, there's loads of nice little, little touches to this building that I just want to capture as close as possible. And yeah, so let's run around with this now. And then, after that, we're going to get the old man out and we're going to do some Polaroids. So yeah, let's uh, switch up, take off the trusty 16 to 35. A lot of people complain about the Mark I version of this lens. I picked it up for about 200 quid on eBay. And the complaints are that it's not very sharp, but I've never had any issues with this. I'm sure if I use the Mark II or Mark III, then I would see a difference. But for what I need this for, it's absolutely perfect. And I would recommend if you do want a wired, just get it secondhand, eBay or whatever, and get the Mark I version because it is it's a real nice lens. Anyway. Right, now I want to get a picture of that sign because it is pretty cool, man. Like the original sign, I think, from 1933 when it was first built. So yeah, let's get like a decent close-up of that. Definitely not as warm as it was last time I was here. That's for sure. I absolutely love this building, man. I could shoot this. I could shoot this building all day. It's so nice. And today is actually April 1st. And I promise you, this is actually in London. I'm not, I'm not trolling you, man. This building is in London, but you'd expect it to be in like, I don't know, like the Great Gatsby territory. New York, is that where that's filmed? But yeah, crazy. All right, that's the snapshots done. Now, there's a few little spots I've seen over in this sort of direction over here uh, that I do want to shoot. And can you see those palm trees? I want to shoot those palm trees. So that's where we're going now. But look at it. Oh, maybe a, maybe a nice upshot would be great on this. I'll have to switch back to the wide lens. Won't come back when it's a bit cloudier. You know I'm like, I like my clouds. And I just haven't been lucky yet to have blue skies with white fluffy clouds. I haven't been that lucky on this channel yet, but that day will come. I promise that day will come. But it is not that day, to quote Aragorn. So as I said, ugh. so as I said at the beginning of the video, I have been here before to try and record the first video, and it didn't quite work out. So I have actually already taken the Polaroids on this camera, and I can't redo really them because I've run out of colour film, so I need to order some more colour film. But um, what I'll do is I'm going to overlay the footage of me taking those pictures and then I'll put up the photographs on the screen now. But what I did learn, because if you've seen my first video on this channel, I tried to use this and it was a massive failure. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll put the little link to the video now. But I've improved since then and I, I figured out how to expose this camera properly. And I'll tell you how I figured it out, because someone figured it out for me on a website. It's on this website, it's called support.polaroid.com. Of course, it's the Polaroid actual website. And it basically details for you the weather conditions and what to shoot it at. So whether it's very bright sunlight, whether you're in normal daylight, or if like your subject is in shadow and you're in daylight, or if I'm in shadow and my subject is in sun. So it's sort of catered for all situations. Uh, and I managed to get these images here and I love them. They're brilliantly exposed as far as I'm concerned. And they've got that Polaroid edge where you never know exactly what's going to come out of the camera. Um, but it just has that sort of vintage Polaroid feel. I absolutely love them. And what I've got to get used to now is actually creating a triptych where 
you know, three, three photographs that tell a story of a single place. I think these do kind of, but they're not like, they're not exactly what I want to be doing, but I still love the pictures as individuals. So yeah, I'm going to do an entire video just using this and um, we'll go through like a whole film. So it's like eight shots um, and I might even do some black and white film as well. But yeah, so I hope you like those Polaroids and I hope you prefer them to the ones in the first video at least, because I think it's an improvement anyway. So the more I do YouTube and the more I talk in public, the more people just look at you. And I'm sort of learning that people just don't care. Like they look at you, but they're not, they just want to know or they want to be part of it or whatever, I don't know. But it's not anywhere near as bad as you think it is talking in public. Once you get, once you start talking, it's kind of like you're doing your own thing. You're lost in your own world and no one else really matters. So yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying it. Um, Anyway, I hope you like the video. The location itself is amazing, honestly. If you've never been to the Hoover building before, please do visit it. And honestly, you'd never expect a building like this to be in London, but it is. Again, thank you to Laura at Fitz London, who told me about this location, who reached out to me and, and said I should shoot it. Uh, really appreciate that, and she was spot on. And also, I just want to say a massive thank you to at Matt Joes, Matt, for lending me his microphone, because it has made it so much easier to make these videos with just having this microphone. So yeah, thank you, Matt massive massive thank you so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did please could you click the like button because that'd be great and if you want to see more like on location videos then please click subscribe as well and then you'll be notified whenever i get on location again but anyway thank you again and i'll see you later